All right, all right, ladies, gentlemen, citizens of the Empire, welcome back to Mass Effect 1 Legendary Edition. There was somebody over here we wanted to talk to, Jaleed. Hello? Hey there. Oh, you're not CSEC, are you? No. Did you want something? Yeah, I overheard you. What were you trying to explain to the officer before? My colleague is trying to kill me, and I thought we were friends. How do you know he wants you dead? He's changed. He won't talk to me at work anymore, and he started following me. Yesterday, he followed me all the way home, just waiting for a chance. I don't care what anyone thinks. He wants me gone. I know it. Uh, how can I help? What do you need? Is there something I can do? Talk to your friend, maybe? Would you? That's all I want. Someone to talk to him. Tell him to leave me alone. He thinks he can just push me around, but you'll show him, won't you? I'll talk to him, but it, it sounds easier said than done. Just tell me where he is and I'll go find him. Oh, right. Well, he wanted to meet with me down in the wards near the markets. He said he just wanted to talk, but I know better. His name's Shorban. He's a Salarian. You shouldn't have any trouble. He's just a scientist. Wasn't that the Salarian who asked us to scam the Keepers? The Keepers? Well, even more reason to go after him. That's against regulations. I better look into this right away. Find out what he's up to. Anything's possible with Shorban these days. Well, good luck! Okay. Well, shit. Things are just thickening all over the place. Let, let me see. Uh, journal. Talk to Shorbin, but where is his, uh, where's the keeper scans? Out of 11 out of 20. I don't know where I've missed any. I said it was in the markets, plus we still have actual things to do here, right? Yeah, the weapon shipments. Uh, also in the lower markets, so we can kill two birds with one stone. <sighs> Alright, we're, uh, roll a shopkeeper. Just the weapons guy and there's Shorbin. Hold it. That's close enough, Army. You got my payment? I didn't come here to look. Show him the merchandise. Looks good. Damn straight it is. These mods are the best on the market. Now hand over my credits. Here you go. Here you go. Enjoy it. Come on, boys. We're done here. All right. Deal's done. Where do they... Hmm. Commander, I wasn't expecting to see you again. Is there something you want? Uh, yeah. No more answers the truth, no more lies. You can start by telling me the truth, Shorvan. I'm not sure what you're referring to. My experiments are... We're not buying it. Jaleed told us you've been after him. You... spoke with Jaleed? Then you know about the data? Not yet. No, but you're gonna tell me. Everything. You boys can go. Looks like my plans have changed. It's not as bad as you think, Commander. Jaleed and I just got a little over our heads. Explain. Keep talking. The company we work for developed an experimental procedure for use in medical scanners. Jaleed and I saw even more potential, so we stole the plans and secretly developed a tool to scan the Keepers. Can you imagine? A tool that can actually get readings from the Keepers? It's 
So what? What's so special about that? The Keepers are almost impossible to scan. And you can't capture them or get samples. They just self-destruct. After centuries here, we still don't know anything about them. Don't you see? We were the first to scan them, ever. You've seen it yourself, Commander. You know we can do it. Okay. That doesn't explain why you're trying to kill your partner. I'm not trying to kill him. Jalid's job was to disseminate our initial findings. But he decided to keep the data for himself. Maybe to sell it. I don't know. <laughs> sigh. <laughs> Just an audible sigh. I should kill both of you idiots. We lost our heads. We just couldn't let an opportunity like this pass us by. Commander, if you'll just continue gathering data for me, imagine what we might learn. And you'll stand to make a bit of a profit yourself, remember? Fine, I fine. suppose a little okay. scanning here and there won't hurt anyone? Very good. Maybe if you wouldn't mind speaking with Jalid. The data you're gathering for me is useless if Jalid won't help me analyze it. Yeah, I'll talk to him. I'll go have a chat with him right now. Thank you. And happy scanning, Commander. Although there very, very much so seems to be a disconnect between why he thinks you're trying to kill him. Hello there. Welcome to Moreland's famous shop. You want many good supplies? Yeah, yeah, I just yes. want to... Let me see what you have. Oh, you will be pleased, I think. Very good things I have. You will see. Hey, Victorious, how you doing? Uh, standard, I... I just want to sell something, so it's standard, I guess. Um, uh, boop. There we go. So all junk, yes, goodbye, off we go. Oh wait, no, there's a terminal outside to, to move through. Let me check my journal, just real quick. Dr. to Jaleed. All right, so we're going back. Seasick. Probably playing on this. Side, but oh yeah, it's uh, it's fun. <laughs> Way better than the first time I tried to play it. Like what? Five years ago. All right. So both of my people are this way, I think. Yes. Okay. Wait, where'd he go? Oh. Hello again. Did you have any luck finding Shorbin? I'm afraid so. I found out you've been lying to me, Jalid. Lying? Why would I lie to you? You forgot to mention the data about the Keeper. Uh, he told you? I didn't mean for any of this to happen. Right. I was afraid Shorbin would kill me to get the data, so I... Well, I was hoping you'd take care of him. It's okay. We're in this together. Relax. I'm helping you out. Mm. I'm scanning the keepers for Shorbin, but you two need to stop fighting. You're... You're helping us? But... Well, if you say so. Well, if Shorbin can forgive and forget, then so can I. I appreciate the help, Commander. I better go get that data analyzed. Yeah, stop creeping around and being stupid. All right, Shellick, or Selick, however the fuck you say your name. Commander, I hear you have something for me. Here's your shipment, Shellick. Excellent. This is everything I need. Huh. Maybe more than I need. Here, Commander, take this. I won't need it, and you've earned some payment for your work. Thank you. I appreciate your help. It shows a lot of integrity. You didn't need to do anything after I let Jenna go. Now I need to get these mods into evidence. Thanks again, Shepard. Yeah, I know. The credits always help. Do I need to go speak to Rita now? No? Okay. Sweet. Well, let's go see the requisitions officer somewhere around here. Is it 
Is he on the map? Yeah, oh, it's over here. Literally across the hall. But Shepard can't run for more than 20 feet. One sec, looking you up. Commander Shepard, here with the Alliance military. First time on the Citadel, that about right? Yep. How did you know all that? I'm the CSEC requisitions officer. I need to make sure our buyers are authorized. So, will you be purchasing anything today, Commander Shepard? Show me what you've got. Sounds good. Just let me set you up. Well, this must be a mistake. System's telling me to offer you our select stock. Spectre? Yep. Well, I heard about that, but I didn't realize it was you. Sorry, Commander. Just show me what you've got. I'll open the rare stocks for you, Commander. Enjoy. Shotguns, heavy armor. I don't think I can wear heavy armor. I don't know how the how the armor stuff works in this game just yet. Is it a skill? Like, I don't know. Alright, so now what? Speak to the ambassador. He's in the docking bay accessible through the central elevator. Okay. Is this a central elevator or is that one? Wait, no. Presidium. Docking bay. Okay. Coming up in a Report later today, Emily Wong investigates corruption on the Citadel and uncovers a full-blown crime syndicate. We did that. Or we helped her with it. Alright, Udina. What do you got for me, you bastard? I've got big news for you, Shepard. Captain Anderson is stepping down as commanding officer of the Normandy. The ship is yours now. She's quick and quiet, and you know the crew. Perfect ship for a Spectre. Treat her well, Commander. Oh, I will. I'll take good care of her, sir. I know you will, Commander. Okay, so uh, why are you doing this? Any word on Saren? I want the truth. Why are you stepping down, sir? You needed your own ship. A Spectre can't answer to anyone but the Council. And it's time for me to step down. There's more to this. Any word on Saren? Come clean with me, Captain. You owe me that much. I was in your shoes 20 years ago, Shepard. They were considering me for the Spectres. Why didn't you ever mention this? What was I supposed to say? I could have been a Spectre, but I blew it? I failed, Commander. It's not something I'm proud of. Ask me later and I'll tell you the whole story. For now, all you need to know is, I was sent on a mission with Saren, and he made sure the Council rejected me. I had my shot. It came and went. Now you have a chance to make up for my mistakes. I won't let you down, sir. Saren's gone. Don't even try to find him. But we know what he's after. The conduit. He's got his Geth scouring the Traverse looking for clues. We had reports of Geth in the Pharaoh system shortly before our colony there dropped out of contact, and there have been sightings around Noveria. Find out what Saren was after on Pharaohs and Noveria. Maybe you can figure out where the conduit is before he does. The Reapers are the real threat. I'm with the Council on this one, Shepard. I'm not sure they even exist. But if they do exist, the Conduit's the key to bringing them back. Stop Saren from getting the Conduit, and we stop the Reapers from returning. I'll stop him. We have one more lead. Matriarch Benezia, the other voice in that recording. She has a daughter, a scientist who specializes in the Protheans. We don't know if she's involved, but it might be a good idea to try and find her. See what she knows. Her name's Liara, Dr. Liara Tassoni. We have reports she was exploring an archaeological dig on one of the uncharted worlds in the Artemis Tau Cluster. I'll start there. Sounds like we should head for the Artemis Tau Cluster. It's your decision, Commander. You're a Spectre now. You don't answer to us. But your actions still reflect on humanity as a whole. 
You make a mess and I get stuck cleaning it up. I'll try not to make things any harder on you, Ambassador. Glad to hear it, Commander. Remember, you were a human long before you were a Spectre. I have a meeting to get to. Captain Anderson can answer any questions you might have. Okay. Yes, Commander? How you holding up? How are you holding up? Honestly, this isn't how I pictured my career coming to an end. Pushing papers really isn't my thing. But you're the one who can stop, Saren. I believe in you, Shepard. If that means I have to step aside, so be it. Okay. Um... Oh, shit. No. Tell me what happened with you and Saren 20 years ago. It's close to 20 years ago now. Ambassador Goyle was our representative here on the Citadel. Like Udina, she wanted to get a human into the Spectres. She chose me. The Council sent Saren to keep an eye on me and evaluate my performance, just like they sent Nihilus to keep tabs on you. So why hide it? Why weren't you honest with me? It's not something I'm proud of. I had a chance to become the first human Spectre, and I failed. Saren made sure of that. Well, from what you said earlier, you didn't fail. He fucked up and then blamed you. I think I deserve the whole story. We had intel on a rogue scientist being funded by Batarian interests. He was trying to set up a facility to develop illegal AI technology out in the Verge. Alliance Intel had done all the work, but the Council wanted a Spectre involved. We compromised. I was assigned to help Saren in his investigation. We tracked the scientist to a refining facility on Kamala. He was hidden away somewhere inside, protected by an army of Batarian mercenaries. The plan was simple. Sneak into the plant, capture the scientist, sneak back out. Quick, quiet, and a minimum of bloodshed. And then Saren fucked it up. I'm guessing things didn't go as planned. Saren and I split up to cover more ground. Then about halfway through the mission, there was a massive explosion in the refinery core. Officially, it was ruled an accident, but I think Saren detonated it on purpose to draw off the enemy guards. How many casualties? The explosion tore the refinery to shreds. The whole place was on fire. Black chemical clouds poured out into the atmosphere. Nobody inside survived. Jeez. There was a camp for the workers and their families nearby. Between the fires and the toxic fumes, the final death count was over 500. Mostly civilians. Saren didn't care. The target was eliminated, mission accomplished, and I ended up taking the blame. That ended all talk of me joining the Spectres. Saren caused the explosion. How'd he pin it on you? In his report, Saren accused me of blowing his cover. He said it was my fault the guards were ready for us. He claimed that's why it turned into a massacre. Saren's report was all the proof the Council needed to kill my chances of becoming a Spectre. That wasn't proof, that's bullshit! Don't blame yourself, Captain. I don't. I blame Sarah. I think he wanted things to go bad. He was looking for an excuse to blow that refinery. Maybe he just likes the violence. Maybe he was just trying to make me look bad to keep humans out of the Spectres. If so, he pulled it off. Well, he's a racist piece of shit, like somebody we know, Ashley! Why'd you let him get away with it? Who do you think the Council was going to listen to? Me? Or their best agent? I had a bad feeling about him right from the start. I should have been more careful. Maybe I could have stopped things before they got out of hand. Don't blame yourself, Captain. I don't. I blame Saren. I think he wanted things to go bad. Maybe he just likes the violence. Wait a minute, okay, this does Maybe he was just trying to make The only thing bad. I care about is stopping Saren. You're right, Commander. It's no good living in the past. Alright, what do we know about the cluster? What do you know about the Artemis Tau Cluster? Not much. I've never been there myself. A handful of systems with a few small, uncharted worlds, but no real colonies. Might not be easy finding Dr. Tassoni out there. My advice is to look for the world with the Prothean Ruins. Sounds good. Uh, what about Pharos? Any extra intel you can give me on our colony at Pharos? The entire planet used to be one giant Prothean city. Mostly ruins now. But some of the infrastructure is still intact. The colony tried to build on what the Protheans left behind. We lost all contact with them when the Geth attacked. Okay, so it was Coruscant, but for the Protheans. What can you tell me about Novaria? Novaria's trouble. Always has been. The whole planet's basically a center for corporations to conduct illegal research. Sounds like America. Watch your back there, Shepard. 
Spectres are about the only form of citadel authority Novaria respects. All right. But they aren't popular. I should go. I'll be here if you need anything. Well, I hope you won't be here. You don't need to be standing at the docking bay all for the whole game. Stand by, shore party. Decontamination in progress. Yeah, the famous. I love how they made fun of it in Mass Effect 3. What's happening? I heard what happened to Captain Anderson. Survives a hundred battles and then gets taken down by backroom politics. Just watch your back, Commander. If things go bad on this mission, you're next on their chopping block. Captain Anderson should be the one in charge. It's like I'm stealing the ship from him. Yeah, the captain got screwed. But it's not like you could have stopped it. Nobody's blaming you. Everyone on this ship's behind you, Commander. 100%. Intercom's open. If you got anything you want to say to the crew, now's the time. This is Commander Shepard speaking. We have our orders. Find Saren before he finds the conduit. I won't lie to you, crew. This mission isn't going to be easy. This began with an attack on a human settlement in the Traverse. But we know Saren won't stop there. His Geth armies aren't going to stay on the far fringes of Citadel space. For too long, our species has stood apart from the others. Now it's time for us to step up and do our part for the rest of the galaxy. Time to show them what humans are made of. Wherever Saren goes, we'll follow. Wherever he searches for the conduit, we'll be there. We will hunt him to the very ends of the galaxy and bring him down. Humanity needs to do this. Not just for our own sake, but for the sake of every other species in Citadel space. Saren must be stopped. And I promise you all, we will stop him. Well said, Commander. Captain will be proud. The Captain gave up everything so I could have this chance. We can't fail. Yes, sir. Okay, that was an anticlimactic end to that scene. <laughs> Holy shit. Alright, everybody. How you doing, Presley? If anyone has to take over for Captain Anderson, I'm glad it's you. I'm not sure about having non-humans on our ship, though. What did I say about the races? We're all on the same team here, Presley. With all due respect, sir, that's what they said about Nihilus. Look how that turned out. I'm in charge here, Presley. I decide if we have non-humans on this vessel. Yes, sir. Understood, also, sir. Nihilus got shot. Nihilus died. <laughs> he didn't do anything wrong. Speak freely, Presley. I want to know if you have a problem with non-humans. It's not that, Commander. Humanity has always handled its own problems. Saren attacked one of our colonies. We should be the ones to stop him. We don't need their help. First of all, we've caused most of our own problems. But why would you turn away? Some people think asking for help is a sign of weakness. That's just being stupid and stubborn. No matter how strong you are, allies can make you stronger. I guess so. Maybe I'm just stuck in the old ways of thinking. But don't worry, Commander. This won't be a problem. That's not a maybe, but I'm glad to hear it. Carry on, Presley. Yes, sir. Okay. Um... Rex and Garrus are all not here. All right, we're going to talk to everybody before we ship out. Sleeper pod. What am I examining? All right. Caden, any final words? Anything you need, Commander? Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? I've wasted enough of your time for now, Commander. Okay. We'll have time for personal debriefings later. Cool. We'll talk another time, Lieutenant. Commander? Dude's got rock for hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kinda. Doctor? Oh, wait, she's over there. Wait, what's this? Oh, the metagel. Yes, Commander? Is okay. there something you need? 
As I, I should go. All this later. Goodbye, Commander. Earlier. Uh, that's my office over there, so it's empty. And down we go. I hate the way elevators work in this game because <laughs> cuz I'm just like stuck staring at a wall I know I'm not like most people but I'd rather run in circles while the elevator goes down nice ship you got Shepard what can I do for you what's your story Rex there's no story go ask the Quarian if you want stories Oh, come on. You Krogan lived for centuries. Don't tell me you haven't had a few interesting adventures. Well, there was this one time the Turians almost wiped out our entire race. That was fun. Just yeah as an answer, no. I heard about that. You know, they almost did the same to us. It's not the same. Isn't it? Well, see, I don't know much about the first contact war. But I'm pretty sure the Turians didn't attempt an actual genocide. But I don't have an option to say it's not. <laughs> it seems pretty much the same to me. So your people were infected with a genetic mutation? An infection that makes only a few in a thousand children survive birth? And I suppose it's destroying your entire species? I suppose it isn't all the same. I don't expect you to understand, but don't compare humanity's fate with the Krogan. Sorry, Rex. I wasn't trying to get you upset. Your ignorance doesn't upset me, Shepard. As for the Krogan, I gave up on them long ago. The genophage infected us, but it's not what's killing us. Uh, so you, I wouldn't say give. Because our fate's better than yours, da dear lord, holy shit. Uh, what the fuck was I about to say? <laughs> what can you tell me about the genophage? Ask the Solarians if you want details. They made it. All I know, it makes breeding nearly impossible. Thousands die in stillbirth, and most never get that far. Every Krogan is infected. Every one. And no one's rushing to find a cure. Why don't the Krogan try to find a cure? When was the last time you saw a Krogan scientist? Fair point. To ask a Krogan, would he rather find a cure for the genophage or fight for credits? He'll choose fighting every time. It's just who we are, Shepard. I can't change that. Nobody can. I see. Are your people really dying? We're sure not getting any stronger. We're too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. Lots of species have left their homes and prospered. But they go to colonize new worlds. We're not settlers. We're warriors. We want to fight. So we leave. Hire ourselves out. And most of us never go back. Yeah, I'd say that's a good comparison. So long, Forks in space. Shepard. Ash? Commander? Uh, how are we doing? How are we doing? Like, her and me or the mission? Do you have a few minutes to talk one-on-one? -on -one? I'm sorry, Commander. I need to get my duty squared away. Cool. I wouldn't mind talking more later, though. Dismissed, Chief. Sir. Where's Tally must be in the engine room. She's always in the engine room. Thanks for bringing me on board, Commander. No problem. I knew working with a Spectre would be better than life at CSAC. Have you worked with a Spectre before? Well, no, but I know what they're like. Spectres make their own rules. You're free to handle things your way. But CSEC, you're buried by rules. The damn bureaucrats are always on your back. It's not that bad. For the most part, the rules are there for a reason. Maybe. 
But sometimes it feels like the rules are only there to stop me from doing my work. If I'm trying to take down a suspect, it shouldn't matter how I do it, as long as I do it. But CSEC wants it done their way. Protocol and procedure come first. That's why I left. That was your reason? I love how the second answer is just always, I see. So you just quit because you didn't like the way they do things? There's more to it than that. It didn't start out bad, but as I rose in ranks, I got saddled with more and more red tape. CSEC's handling of Saren was typical. I just couldn't take it anymore. I hate leaving. Okay, it... Like I said before, really sounds like CSEC didn't handle Saren. They just ignored it. I hope you made the right choice. I'd hate for you to regret it later. Well, that's sort of why I teamed up with you. It's a chance for me to get off the Citadel, see how things are done outside CSEC. Either way, I plan to make the most of this. And without CSEC headquarters looking over my shoulder, well, maybe I can get the job done my way for a change. It depends. If getting the job done means endangering innocent people, then no. We get the job done right, not fast. Got it? I wasn't trying to. I understand, Commander. Good. The wreck officer. Tally! There she is. Hi, Tally. Your ship's amazing, Shepard. I've never seen a drive cord like this before. I can't believe you were able to fit it into a ship this small. I'm starting to understand why you humans have been so successful. I had no idea Alliance vessels were so advanced. Normally they're not gathering information on us. Jesus Christ. Everything is not a conspiracy. The Normandy's a prototype. Cutting edge technology. A month ago I was patching a makeshift fuel line into a converted tugship in the flotilla. Now... I'm sitting on board one of the most advanced vessels in Citadel space. I have to thank you again for bringing me along. Traveling on a vessel like this is a dream come true for me. Yeah, no problem. Uh, she's a spy. Yeah, the species with no, f no fucking planets as spies to spy on ship designs. I had no idea you found ship technology so interesting. It comes with being a quarian. The migrant fleet is the key to the survival of my people. Ships are our most valuable resource. But we don't have anything like this. We make do with cast-offs and second-hand equipment. We just try to keep them running for as long as we can. Some of the fleet's larger vessels date all the way back to our original flight from the Geth. Damn, 300 years old? I can't believe your fleet's still using ships that are three centuries old. They're constantly being repaired, modified, and refitted. They aren't pretty, but they work. Mostly. We've tried to make ourselves as independent as possible on the flotilla. Grow our own food, mine, and process our own fuel. But some things we just can't make on our own. A patch to maintain the hull integrity requires raw materials we just don't have. That's why our pilgrimages are so important. I see. Uh, pilgrimage. I want to know more about the pilgrimage. When my people reach maturity, we leave our birth ships and seek acceptance with a new crew. It's necessary to maintain genetic diversity among the fleet. But no ship wants to accept someone who will be a burden on them. So, to prove our worth, we embark on a pilgrimage. We set out alone, leaving the flotilla and our families behind us. We only return once we have found something of value we can bring back to the fleet. This is presented as a gift to the captain of the respective ship we wish to join. If the gift is accepted, we are welcomed into the crew. No, I wouldn't say that. Uh, do they always accept? Sounds dangerous. Yeah, it probably could be dangerous, especially if you're doing what we're doing. Can a captain choose to reject the gift? Uh, that doesn't happen often. Most captains are eager to increase the size of their crew. It increases their own standing in our society. Even when a gift is not particularly valuable, the captain usually accepts it out of a sense of tradition. However, there is a stigma to presenting a substandard gift. Right. It's not the best way to make a good impression on a new community. Most pilgrims don't return until they find something worthwhile. I can't believe they just send you off alone. It's not like they just cast us out. Before we leave, we are given lessons in how to survive outside the flotilla. 
and given gifts to help us on our journey. We also receive implants to fight off sickness and disease. Generations of living in an isolated and highly controlled environment have left our immune systems weaker than most. By the time we leave the fleet, we are well equipped for the pilgrimage. This is a rite of passage for all Quarians. If it were dangerous, our numbers would suffer. Virtually every pilgrimage ends with a triumphant return and the ritual presentation of the gift to one of the fleet's captains. Okay. I want to talk about something else. Like what? Uh, Geth, Quarians... Tell me about your people. Our lives aren't easy. Resources are scarce, and we are constantly on the move. No COVID Everything jokes. Everything we do must in some way contribute to the continuation of the migrant fleet. There are 17 million Quarians in the flotilla, and each of us relies on the others for survival. The bonds among my people are strong. Unfortunately, we have had to surrender many of the freedoms and civil liberties other species take for granted. Like what? What kind of freedoms? Well, it's illegal for parents to have more than one child. If our population grows too much, it would strain our resources to their breaking point. Of course, we also can't allow our numbers to become too few. If our population is in decline, the rule against single births is temporarily repealed. In extreme cases of population decline, incentives are even offered to encourage multiple births. Though the Conclave hasn't had to take such measures in nearly a century. Okay, incentives like what? Please... <laughs> what does that mean? Please tell me. <laughs> That's your government. The Conclave is our civilian branch of government. Each ship can elect a representative to serve on the Conclave and make decisions that affect the fleet as a whole. On matters that affect an individual ship, however, the captain has the final say. It's a tradition that dates back to the early days, when the fleet was governed by martial law. Fortunately, most captains nowadays are smart enough to have an elected council from their crew to give them advice and guidance. Yeah, the limit being two, ch two children per coupling is something I th would have thought of, but fuck it, maybe they do the multiple breedings often? So the ultimate power rests with elected officials. In practice, the Conclave and the respective council for each ship tend to set the rules that govern our daily lives. But in theory, we are still under military jurisdiction. The five top-ranking military officials in the fleet serve on the Admiralty Board. These five have the power to overrule any decision by the Conclave in case of emergency. To do so requires unanimous agreement among the Admiralty. And they can only do this once. After that, the entire board must resign their posts. It's a safeguard that served us well. In nearly three centuries, the Admiralty Board has only overruled the Conclave four times. So almost once every hundred years makes sense. Uh, what about the Geth? I want to know more about the Geth. I doubt I can tell you anything you don't already know. It's been almost three centuries since they drove my people into exile. All I know is the story of their origins, what they were when we created them, and how they turned on us. Okay. So, I want to talk about ladies something. Ladies and gentlemen, else. citizens of the Empire. Like what? I will be back in a moment. I should go. And when we return, we're gonna See probably go hunting for Liara. So I think so much, and I will be back in a second. Mm -hmm.